for New Mexico and Missouri. Just one game in this history, going back to 1983, and Missouri won that game easily, one nothing. Right now, 87 degrees, slight wind, and if you were at the game Monday, very similar conditions, hot and humid, just like it was at University Stadium. You just don't get that intense New Mexico heat. It's a, it's a different type of heat. Yes, it is. There's Gary Pinkel, the fifth-year head coach at the University of Missouri. Team slumped a little bit last year, dropped to five and six. And there's Rocky Long, actually in his eighth season at New Mexico, who has a chance with a win tonight to become the all-time winningest coach, moving past Roy Johnson into the number one spot with 42 victories. Right now on the field, a uh, very emotional moment as the University of Missouri Tigers line up at the 25-yard line, symbolizing the number of Aaron O'Neill, who died tragically after a workout in July from viral meningitis. That's such a sad story, Mike. That young man coming here to pursue his football dream and something like that happens. You just don't know when, when things are going to happen like that. I guess the best thing to say as far as that is live each day like it's your last. And you see the... Number 25 on the backside of everyone's helmet, also in honor and in memory of Aaron O'Neill. And, and they are going to keep his name on the roster. Nobody will use his number uh, until he was expected to graduate, until his eligibility was going to be used up in four years. And so they want to keep and plan to keep his memory alive here at the University of Missouri. And that's a nice gesture for the school to keep the guy alive through, through memory, through thought, and, and make sure everybody remembers that he was a part of this club and, and that, that his life and his, the contributions, the potential contributions that would have come ended so tragically. New Mexico getting ready now, and looks like New Mexico will receive here, although we didn't see the formal signal. There's Cole McCamey. In his second year as a starter for the University of New Mexico, had his best game statistically as a Lobo last week in the win over UNLV. He looked like an All-American in the first half. Didn't look quite as sharp in the second half, and I guess that was true for the entire team. Well, you know, one thing to take into account in that game, you play somebody that you've beaten the last couple of years. Well, I know UNLV beat them the year before, but you play somebody that you're used to kind of dominating them in the game, and uh, you get out to a big start like that, you can lose focus. And that's probably what New Mexico did. Back deep for the Lobos, Marcus Smith, number four, Jamar Hall, number 10. The Tigers get ready to kick this one off. Their unusual kickoff formation, and we are underway. Smith takes it at about the five, out to the 25, where he stops the ball's loose, but the Lobos pick it back up, and that may have been Hall. His running mate back there picking it up, and New Mexico will take over at about the 31-yard line. Now the starting lineup for the University of New Mexico. Again, 1-0, and and there's Ryan Cook, the fine center from Cibola High School, All-American candidate, and a great NFL uh, future, perhaps, leading that offensive line. Now the skill players for the Lobos. And again, second game back from that devastating knee injury for Dontrell Moore. Had a pretty good game against UNLV. The stats don't show it as far as his rushing, but he had some terrific moves on some pass plays. First and 10, New Mexico at the 31. McCamey's pass, short pass is complete. That'll pick up about six yards. Good coverage by David Overstreet, and that is Brown with the catch right there. Travis Brown, who had six catches last weekend. And now for the Missouri defense, Brian Smith, one of the all-time sack leaders at Mizzou. Number 39 will be watching him. Here's the rest of that defense now. And look for number for, uh, number 33, Diedrich Carrington, the fine middle linebacker for the Tigers. Second down play. We'll call it second and four. Option, Dontrell Moore. Cutting back. Great move there. First down, New Mexico out to the near the 45-yard line. And every time Dontrell Moore, I think, gets the ball for the first few games, everybody's going to hold their breath and be watching to see what kind of moves he has. Right, and you know what? That was a good read for, on Cole McCamey's part because you look at the way the Missouri was stacked. They were overloading the protection on the other side. 
Uh, Cole McCamey comes out and pitches the ball to John Trell Moore to his right, which is, was great because on the left side, a lot of black and gold shirts. There's Moore, the senior from Roswell. Needed 149 yards rushing to move past Michael Williams as the all-time leading rusher at UNM. Option left. And Moore has nowhere to go that time. Maybe a yard before he is stopped by the strong safety, Brandon Massey. And Brandon Massey just did a textbook tackle on Dontrell Moore. Caught him square with the shoulders. Didn't try to grab any, anywhere. Didn't try to be high up. Watch this grab right here. Hit him right in the numbers. Right there at his waist. Just, there's nowhere for Dontrell to go because he is wrapped up. Jason... Caprioli is wide right as one of the receivers for New Mexico. He wears number three. Moore is in the slot. Two wide receivers to the top of your screen. Empty backfield. McCamey on the set scramble and stumbles down at about the 50-yard line. Brought down that time by Calvin Washington. He's a senior out of Dallas. And as you notice something on the run there, Mike, you know, they're playing on this artificial surface. And sometimes that's a little bit slicker than the grass. I mean, you just got to get used to the, the two different yep. surfaces. If, if you're used to playing on one, it's really hard to keep the traction on the other. It works both ways there. This is field turf. That's the brand name. And, and of course, sometimes you adjust your shoes and your cleats based on that. Third down for New Mexico. It was not particularly effective on third down last week at 40%. Quick pitch. Moore on the corner, has the edge, great blocking downfield, inside the 30-yard line down to the 25. Great blocking downfield that time by New Mexico, including the right tackle, Anthony Kilby, and boy, did he get downfield. And Anthony Kilby just showing you why he was a junior college All-American, Mike. Look, and look at Dontrell with the presence of mind. This is a veteran running back. Look how he's looking to field. He's surveying the whole field to find out where his blockers are. He's not giving a hint of where he's going. He's just looking. His head is like it's on a swivel. And that's why Dontrell was able to pick up that yardage and get the first down and get the logo to get to position. And Hank Baskin, number 18, with a great block, too, occupying the receiver. At the 26, they're calling it. Pass. Almost a great catch over there by Baskin. Nearly one hand of that one in good coverage by Calvin Washington on that left side. And that was, you know, that, that throw was a little bit hot to Hank's right. If, if That's the only place Cole really could have put that ball when you look at where the coverage was because if he had thrown that ball inside, that ball had a chance to be picked off, tipped and picked off. Second down and 10 now. Moore's the lone setback, man in motion. On the fly series, that is Marcus Smith cutting up. And he'll be close to the first down marker. I think he's got it. Finally, Marcus King made the tackle, but that's the first time Smith has run that play this season. And that play was very effective going back to last year when the Lobos were playing against BYU and needed a, a pickup. Marcus Smith came in on the fly series and did just that, a big game. You watch Marcus Smith cutting it upfield, and his speed is kind of deceiving. When you're out there on the, looking at him, it doesn't look like he's running that fast until you really get, until you pay attention and see how fast his speed are really moving. Up to 15. Missouri fakes the blitz. McKamey up the middle. Good surge by that line down to the 10. And that's Cole McKamey just following his blocks. You know, you talk about the surge by the line, Mike. When you have that many guys weighing 300 plus, walk, moving forward, all you have to do is get behind them. They, they're going somewhere. <laughs> McKamey last week, I want to say last week, it was actually this week on Monday, 14 carries, 38 yards. And you know, he was a track star in high school. I mean, he ran, he was a sprinter. And we saw him pull away from the Wyoming defense last year, a big time run there. Now on second and five. Smith in motion again, handoff inside. Dontrell Moore jumps toward the first down marker. He'll be a little bit shy, I believe, before he was brought down by Derek Ming. And now it will be third and short for the New Mexico Lobos. Opening drive, Mike Powers and Van Tate with you from Columbia, Missouri. First road game of the season for the New Mexico Lobos. And Lobos right now are mixing up the plays very well like they did in the UNLV game from the start. Different mix of plays. 
Third down, short. Adrian Bird, the fullback. I formation, two tight ends. McCamey keeps it. They want six. They're going for the end zone. Touchdown, New Mexico. They found the tight end, John McCrone. And look for John McCrone to take make big plays all season long, Mike. They say he has the best hand as far as the receivers. Uh, not, of course, not better than Hank Basket. They're about on the same level. But McCrone has those soft hands, and he can really catch the ball. I mean, you don't have anything on your outside corners. Best best target is the tight end. Junior college transfer from Palomar JC, native of Chicago. Got one pass for 32 yards last week, has his first Division I touchdown in New Mexico. Tries to add the extra point. Kenny Bird on. And New Mexico has stunned this crowd here in Columbia, moving down the field. Some 70 yards for the opening score of the game. 7 nothing. our score, 10.44 to go first quarter. More from Mizzou after this. And New Mexico has taken a 7 nothing lead. Five-yard touchdown pass to that young man right there, Mulcrone. Scoring drive, 73 yards. John Mulcrone, the junior college transfer, the short touchdown pass from Paul McCain. Good look at Kenny Bird, who added the extra point. He is the place kicker for New Mexico. Earned the job in fall camp with about a week to go. On its way. And about the three. Good coverage, I thought, for New Mexico. Breaking free out to the 30-yard line is number 22, Tony Temple. And that's that speed of Missouri. Uh, Coach Rocky Long said that he saw, when he saw the Arkansas State game tape, he said it looked like Arkansas State was jogging and Missouri was running sprints. <laughs> and here's a look at the Missouri starting lineup. Outstanding offensive line. They are big, just like New Mexico, although not quite as big. And there's Brad Smith, the reigning Big 12 player of the week after his outstanding effort, more than 400 total yards against Arkansas State. Gets things started with a short pass. That turns into a decent game. That's Martin Rucker, one of the tight ends for the Tigers. And after that play was complete, he didn't really take a good shot. He just kind of touched. The New Mexico defense, Marcus Parker playing with a broken bone in his right hand, has that wrapped up in a cast. He is playing out there. The rest of that Lobo defense, we talked a little bit about Gabriel Fulbright in our open. Second down, six. Brad Smith from the shotgun gets the ball complete. First down, Missouri. And that's to Chase Kaufman, another of the tight ends for Missouri. Three catches for 36 yards and a touchdown last week for the true freshman. Missouri's playing three or four true freshmen this year. You don't think a big 12 team would need to do that, but that's what the case is for the title. Right, they lost a lot of guys too. Here's Woods breaking into the secondary and tripped up at about the 25-yard line. And there's that speed you talked about, whether it is Woods or Temple. These little guys, and they're not very big, they can both. Well, this is what the defense does not want to do. They don't want to see those guys turn the corners. They want to kind of keep them in the pen, Mike, and, and make sure they're in their rush range. And, but, but everybody definitely not in place in that play. Just grab them as they come back to live action. Cross the middle. A short pass and catch to William Franklin. He was the leading receiver last week for the... The Tigers against yeah, Arkansas State. And we notice here, no huddle offense, right. spread formation. They're trying to find an offense that fits Brad Smith. He was much hyped last year, and the team and, and Brad sort of flopped a little bit under the pressure. This year they feel this is a better set for him. And I think they might be right. Inside pitch, inside the 15-yard line to Franklin. So a wide receiver getting something of a running play on that one, a little bit of a counter. And Missouri moves the chains again. You know, what, what that no-huddle offense does for you, if we watch the replay, it's kind of like a shuttle pass there, Mike. Uh, if, if, you know, you, you have that no-huddle offense, you don't give the defense a chance to regroup it and, and look at what you're lining up in, really. That's the 13, man in motion again. It's Temple, rather, sets up, blocks, across the middle, and overthrown. 
Good coverage by the New Mexico Lobos that time, Jarrell Malone. And many of you might be turning in to uh, watch U.S. Open tennis tonight. We uh, will have that for you. Tape delayed following our late news tonight at about 10.30. So we will have it, but it won't be until after our late news, about 10.35. And off Kemper tries to find some room outside. It's a foot race. Great job coming up from that quarter spot. And I think that was Malone again. Number 19 with the great stop. That's what Jarrell Malone just making sure that he stays in the Not letting the guy get outside. Down. That was great. Great play by Malone, Mike. And now it's third down. And it's all the five to go. Can this Lobo defense hold here? Blitz are coming. Some room now inside, and the Lobos recover. Quincy Black was the first player there, and what a great first half Black had last week against UNLV. He was in on almost every play of the game. That's why he was in there getting treated for uh, dehydration. And Missouri will try to kick a field goal right now. So New Mexico's defense finally stiffens. Once the Tigers got into the uh, red zone. Right? Adam Crockett will come on now. Ball will be spotted at the 15. It'll be a 25-yard attempt. On its way, it's up. And Missouri is on the board on the Tigers' first drive of the game. New Mexico still leads at 7-3. We'll be back with more of the first quarter after this. Well, we have a little bit of a shootout developing here with New Mexico leading Missouri 7-3 in the first quarter. The Lobos broke 73 yards for the touchdown in their first drive, and the Tigers have answered with a 61-yard drive. And the field goal, Brad Smith, 5 of 6, 27 yards on that drive. Charles Brown, Jamar Hall back deep. And that right there is Marcus Smith, who wisely decides not to run it out. Shotgun finds his man, basket across the middle, cutting up field. He'll gain about nine before he's brought down by Calvin Washington. And Hank has a word or two for uh, Washington there, and now he'll leave the game momentarily. Looks like that leg might still be giving him a little trouble. Hank basket the third. That's, that's HB3, just like the Hummer. All right, second down and one. The shy of the 29. Both teams exclusively from the shotgun. Both teams going to the spread offense this year. Trying to take advantage of their talent. And some of that talent right there is Don Frell Moore. Of course, one of the big concerns for Missouri this year was that huge offensive line of New Mexico. About 332, not counting the tight end. So they're, they're big, very big, and uh, very physical. And that's what they did a year ago, and that's what they did. They, did, they, they, they got back to that a little bit in this particular game. You can see that they line up in the eye formation and start pounding a little bit and, and hitting you up the middle with that big offensive line. And when it wears you down a little bit, it's in the fourth quarter, certainly. But that, that'll be a great challenge for us, there's no question about it. They're, they're very, very uh, big up front. And, uh, as big as offensive line I've ever, ever seen. Now the screen to basket. Has a couple of blockers out there. And uh, a decent game before basket is brought down, and it looked like it had a lot more potential when it started, that play. Well, you know, that's uh, that just shows you the kind of speed that uh, Missouri has, because that play closed down real quick. But give, look, look at Hank Basket with the presence of mind to after he got the ball. You saw him looking at the first down marker. So the play ended. He was still trying to get that first down. That's been the yard short of the first down now, inside Missouri territory. Middle tip there, and that will hit the turf. Dontrell Moore started this game, first drive, four carries, 37 yards. After the second drive, it was seven carries, 32 yards. So he lost some ground during that uh, second series, but still, anytime you carry for 30 yards in the first quarter, that's not bad. And, you know, Don, uh, speaking of that, uh, Spartan Little bit took the ball back, Fulbright, we were just talking about him earlier, how he had to pick up the end of the game, the UNLV game, to make that a 24-22 victory. 
Third and inches now. Matt Quillen in to block. Number 31, the fullback. Option. Quick hit to Moore. Where's he going to go? Cutback. And he's losing yards again. Two-yard loss. David Overstreet is there. And that play was messed up when somebody got through to push back the quarterback, Paul McCain. Somebody got through, right through where Ryan Cook's gap is. Because look at Cole McCamey. He's actually grabbed. See right there. He's actually grabbed before he even pitches the ball. So that gap wasn't protected. And that led to the Lobos losing yardage and having the punt, Mike. And the New Mexico running game the last two series has not been good. As the Tigers make some adjustments. And it off. Back to punt it away again. Second punt. It's a high one, not particularly deep. Fair catch signaled at the 19. Oh, good hit down there. Tony Temple is sent backwards by one of the Lobo defensive backs who came up and nailed it. Well, that is just, that, that's what I was talking about, playing Lobo football, being physical. Look at the end of this play, Mike. If you're going to get something, you're going to pay for it also. Play is ending. And it, was, it looked worse than what it was because it's more like a pads rubbing than yep. a solid shot. That was Charles Brown, number seven, who laid the lumber that time. That's the end of the first quarter. New Mexico on top by a 7-3 count. And here's a terrific look at Memorial Stadium in Columbia, Missouri. And there's a look at the numbers from the first quarter. And how about the bottom number right there, man? The time of possession, that's a glaring number, Mike. For the Lobos had to have the ball that long and not do anything that's good for Missouri because as long as that happens that's a momentum builder. Jay's Griffin breaks a couple of tackles. It was a near loss and he picks up eight. Oh, I said Griffin, I meant Coffin. Yeah, the big tight end. And just a young man, Missouri product. Most of the players on this team are from Missouri or Texas, over 80 of them from those two states. Kaufman does everything with this play. I mean, the ball gets there, and he's got somebody on him right away, and he, he just made that happen. This keeps it. First down. Here we go. Off to the races and brought down out of bounds. And That's going to be a flop face in. mask. Face mask on the defense. Number 27. 15 yards in a run. First down. And we might be able to get a good look at it right there. And, in fact, we get a great look at it. Harris did not immediately let go of the helmet, so it's the big-time personal foul penalty. Nick now with 29 yards rushing. The pass looping it into the end zone. And a little bit overthrown. Very athletic play right there looking for Kaufman. That was a very dangerous pass, too. I mean, Kaufman was covered pretty good. It was step to step. That ball could have been picked off. It hits the turf, bringing up second down now. Well, you need to be shape, in shape in a football game like this, where, of course, the Lobo defense is always blitzing, and, and the Missouri offense is always spread out and, and never huddles up. Right, so there's a lot of running going on. Handoff, Tony Temple, short game there. Clayton is there. As well as Michael Tahuli. Freshman All-American from a year ago. You know, it's, this is like a chess match. Now, if, if they force him to kick a field goal again, this would be another swing of momentum. Just like the Lobos, can't, they, they have the possession of the football, but Missouri seems to stop them, and the Lobos are keeping them from the end zone, but who knows what's going to happen. Many college football games are raising funds across the country for the Red Cross effort. Short pass, and that is incomplete on third down. That was kind of a lackluster play right there by the Missouri Tigers. A little bit short to Brad Aguirre. Aguirre, my mistake there. No, well, well the, we're going to call him that. They call him Aguirre. Ek, That's what, yeah. There you go. It, he, uh, he had a big game last week. Yes, he did. And as you can see, he's also the holder for the Tigers. I think, yeah, you, you said it right, Mike. We just call him Ed. <laughs> It's like one of those tennis things almost. Adam Crossett on to try to add the field goal. 
The pole Missouri to within one. And this one, slicing through, and it's good. Started wide, wide, and then moved through the center of the crossbar. And the Tigers have pulled it within one. Seven, six, our score just underway. Second quarter of play. Golden Girl here at the University of Missouri. Tigers have just pulled it within one of the New Mexico Lobos. Seven, six, our score. Tigers have scored twice on the field goals. Lobos once on the very first drive of the game. Cole McCamey touchdown pass to John McClung. And now, Missouri kicks off. The two, it's New Mexico. Jamar Hall coming out, cutting back, out to the 20. Nice effort there. And, and kickoff return has not been one of the strong suits for New Mexico over the last five or six years. First down at the 35. Okay, now run. Cutting back. And didn't look like much of a play, but it gained four yards before Xavier Jackson made the stop. And that's because of speed. That's all because of speed. Cole McCamey with sprinter speed, just like his counterpart, Brad Smith. Cole can run, too, you know. I know people might not realize that, but Cole has some gears, too. And well, Cole, since he arrived at New Mexico, is always considered a running quarterback. And, and he told me and others, I'm sure, hey, I threw the ball at Artesia. <laughs> I was a throwing quarterback. Why does everybody think I'm only a runner? I know he hates that. Fly series. Here we go, Marcus Smith down the sideline, and he's going to have the first down. That, that's it. He's just a fast kid. Anytime Marcus Smith turns the corner, you're not sure what's going to happen. I mean, if he had just a little bit of more space, that that would that play would have gone very far. Now watch how far he takes it. He just strings it out, strings it out, and then he starts turning the corner. Dontrell put a pretty decent block to spring him for the first down. I'm not sure if Dontrell blocked the defensive back or the defensive back. <laughs> <laughs> Ran into Dontrell, huh? Another first down for the New Mexico Lobo. They lead it 7-6 early on, second quarter. That goes in motion again, now sets up. Oh, beautifully designed play to Moore. And he'll have another first down. Finally, Jackson came over to push him out. I love that play. That was well set up by Dan Dowd and his staff. And that, you know, that play could have, uh, well, did you see the end of that play? It looked like Rocky Long wanted a face mask when Dontrell got taken yeah. out of bounds. Did you see the high snap? That was something the Lobos were having a problem with last week against UNLV. Now look at the high snap, snap there. And Cole reacted well to it. I mean, the first week running it, it may have been some jitters with that. But, I mean, you need every second you can get when you're running this offense. And the high snap puts away from that. It's all about time. the 40. Inside handoff. Running room for Berg. Inside the 30-yard line, Adrian Berg. The first little running back out of, out of Missouri City, Texas. And he's a guy that, of course, was physically a fullback. I should say physically, but mostly a fullback. Now they're trying to tail back in different positions. Right, well, he's kind of a Jared Baxter type of guy. The big guy, not going to wow you with his speed, just going to bowl you over. Keeps it, gets a block from Bird. And again, a play that doesn't look like much. Picks up about four. And I think it's, it's sort of interesting that Bird has developed into the number two tailback instead of Rodney Ferguson, the sophomore now from Manzano High School. Well, the one thing, there's, there's two things. Uh, you know, Bird being a senior, uh, the veteran leadership there. The second thing, which hurt Rodney, was sometime in practice, Rodney will put the ball on the ground, fumble. But, but you, if, if going now, in Rodney's defense, Rodney looks unbelievable in practice. I mean, he, he, he runs like crazy. Robo is definitely winning the rushing race battle so far. Into the end zone, looking for basket. Is he in? Yes. Touchdown, New Mexico. The official right on the spot made the signal. And basket hauls in his second TD catch of the season. And give the offensive line credit for giving Cole McCamey enough time to get that ball off. And, and Cole for having the concentration to follow Hank all the way until Hank got open. And, and, and Cole saw the pressure coming, and he just stood there. 
And look at all the time he got he's got to throw the ball. And there's Hank. Hank two steps ahead of his man. Hank dragging his left foot to keep it in bounds and make sure it's a touchdown. He only needs the one. He only needs the one right. in in college football. And as soon as this kick is off, it is unreviewable, not reviewable. And so it will go in the books as a touchdown, and I think it's the correct call. So New Mexico has taken a 14-6 lead, again, quieting this partisan Missouri crowd. Another Hank Basket touchdown has the Lobos in front, 14 to 6, and now we have a couple of replays of this, and it was very close to being out. Watch the right foot, and it looks like right there he's in, and then the heel maybe clips the out-of-bounds line, but it looked like he had that foot in as he catches the ball. Right there. And so it never was reviewed. I'm kind of surprised the booth officials didn't signal, hey, let, let's take a look at a replay and stop this, because it was awfully close to begin with. Right, and then, you know, another thing, too, us being way up here, the game officials down there, and, and maybe this foot was so in that from here it looked like no, you're the right. heel clipped it a no, little you're bit. Right. The kick goes into the end zone, and Missouri will take over at the Touch point. Brad Smith fires out a gain of nine. Good hands that time by Missouri. And that's Arnold Britt for the Missouri Tigers. Again, a couple of the receivers for Missouri are not playing here because of injury. John Coffey out with a shoulder, and Jason Ray out with a broken collarbone. 352 in County, left in the first half. Black from the backside, trying to put the pressure on, but it doesn't work. Completed for the first down to Brad Ekwerekwu for his second catch of the night. That's the one thing about pressure, Mike. If you don't get it there quickly, there's going to always be somebody open downfield. And so that's why when, when, the, when the Lobos throw the kitchen sink and come with the pressure, they got to really get to that quarterback. Let him get back there. Runs it again. To the 50. Four-yard gain for the senior quarterback. It'll be interesting to see if the NFL how they look at Brad Smith. And, and traditionally, they've looked at quarterbacks who are athletic and, and who run as much as they pass. They generally think, well, maybe we'll make a tight end out of him or a defensive back or something like that. Well, I think if somebody like him, you, you let him stay a quarterback because this release is so quick. Quick pitch. Woods cuts back. Nice cut back there. Left the Lobo defender you know, out to lunch there. Billy Britton is there, as well as Garday again. Look at that. Look at the blocking up front. Charles Brown goes, whoops. Great cut from a great running back. Third down play, third and two. Smith off tackle. And they get the first down, but they really need, well, I guess they have time. 2.40 right now. Clock stops as they move the chain. Yeah, they, there's time. Tigers have yet to punch it into the end zone. A couple of field goals. In a three, See, now, if they do punch it in the end zone, that's going to be some momentum for them going to the locker room. That's what the Lobos back on. Last week, the Tigers had their second most total yards on offense ever against Arkansas State. And so this Lobo defense doing a terrific job. Pressure up the middle. Complete for the 30, and the drive stays alive. You see, that's the first time they really got to Smith, even though he delivered the ball. The defensive pressure got to him, and he, he took a shot there. And, and that's, that's another thing about the Lobo defense. The more hits that quarterback takes, if he's able to keep delivering that ball with accuracy, then he's a tough guy. Gerald Humphrey made the catch, and he may have been victimized with the face mask, so there was nothing hard. Franklin goes in motion. From the 30. Smith stays put, and basically throws that one away. That's what I'm talking about right there. He threw that one away, but he took the pump fake, and I think he felt the pressure. The pressure was there. And long as you're a quarterback playing, with this kamikaze-style defense, 
and you have guys coming from everywhere. You don't know, because the Lobos do a good job of disguising what they're going to do. And you don't know where, where, who's coming from where. And if you get hit a couple times, that's in your head. Second down at the first. Four wide receivers in. Roll out right. Quick pass. Gain of six or maybe seven. And that one was for the tight end, Martin Rocker again. Cody Case on the coverage. The linebacker, young linebacker, sophomore from Valencia, California. But this Lobo defense has not hit its stride yet. They've led the Mountain West in sacks five straight years. Only had one last week. None tonight. Right. This is not easy when you're facing somebody like Smith. Running right, cutting back to the 20, inside the 20. With 1.40 to go in the first half, red zone again for Missouri and another first down. That's the, you know, Brad, that's, he's just showing how dangerous he is, like we were talking about before the show started. This guy can beat you with his legs. And now Brad Smith behind center gets the direct snap. Caught the middle, inside the five, down to about the five, and that's Chase Kaufman again. What a terrific job he's doing as a, as a true freshman. You know, I think Brad has found another guy that he likes. <laughs> Chase Kaufman is just having a great game. Once again, if, if, you, if your guys are covered on the outside, what better target than the tight end? Okay, let's see, who is that? That is Woods down to about the one yard line. Make that Tony Temple down to the one. With 1.26 to go, and as you mentioned, man, this is not what you want to go into halftime giving up a late score like this. Massive substitutions by New Mexico. All right, from the two now. Smith will try to run for it in the corner. Cutting back, touchdown Missouri. And now we'll find out if the Tigers will go for two to tie it up or just kick the extra point. And it looks to me like they're going to go for two. That's what I was going to say. If you're, if you're at home and you can tie it up going into the locker room, that's, that's so much momentum. If you go for two, and it's not going to hurt you that bad not to go for two. I mean to uh, contest it. If you go for two and you're still down by two. So with 31 seconds left, the Tigers go for the tie. Odd formation, Smith into the end zone, two points. And Smith talking to the official there, who I believe is telling him, watch the celebration. Normally you would say, we'll take that. 14-14 New Mexico on the road against the Big 12 team. Yeah, it, it, you would. You would normally say that. I think people expect this team to do so many different things that that there you get that feeling again that they're all like, oh, you guys were up 14 and 6, why you let do that? And he had the ball and he was driving. And, but, uh, but that is good. I mean, they're on the road. It's been a short week. They're doing, you know, this is good for them. You know, it's, and, and uh, Missouri, is, as far as adjusting to uh, New Mexico's intensity, uh, that's what I thought would happen because they played a team like Arkansas State and now they're playing a team with New Mexico, like New Mexico, the intensity rising a little bit. And it looked like there's been some adjustment there. And, uh, you know, that's why you have a tie score right now. All right. Well, we've got 30 minutes of football to go. New Mexico and Missouri tied at 14. Passing yards dominated by Missouri. Rushing yards dominated by New Mexico. Total yards almost identical, man. And that's what you would expect from these two teams because New Mexico is more of a, a, a rush team, even though they've gone to the spread offense. You know, we're used to seeing them do that, that power game and just, just running the ball on anyone that they play, really. Third downs, five of eight, both teams. First downs, New Mexico 13, Missouri 16. And so far, Missouri without a penalty. And New Mexico with five. And Van, the, the most critical of that late in that drive, an uh, interference call on the low bar. Micah, Missouri is really wanting that, that momentum. Uh, they come out and look, listen to what they're playing, the eye of the tiger. <laughs> I know you used to dance to that song, didn't you? Well, didn't we all? In, in the sports office, I, I better shut up. I've already told the public too much about their secret life. Lee <laughs> Temple inside the five. Has some room. Out to the 30. Pushed out of bounds at about the 38. And so Missouri brings out a little momentum from the locker room as well. Brad Smith, Missouri quarterback. 15 to 23, 128 yards. One interception in the first half. 
Nine carries, 41 yards, and a touchdown, plus a two-point conversion. He's number 16. Inside pitch. Gains very little. That's Tony Temple. Kansas City, sophomore. They're running backs, two sophomores. Marcus Woods, 5'8", 185. Tony Temple, 5'10", 195. And again, for you tennis fans, take the late for you tonight. The uh, women's final at 10.35 following our late news so we can bring you the Lobo football game. I'll tell you what, they need to shut Tony Temple make sure he doesn't have wheels and a motor on his back. That guy can really fly. Contact made. It looked like there was contact bumping the receiver before the ball got there. That was Franklin, but no flag. I'd like to see that again, yeah. Mike. Blake I wonder was, if that was, uh, if there wasn't a flag because those guys may have run into one another, but it definitely looked like the Lobos got a break there. Blake Lagone there, number 29, oh, maybe the guilty party, but no flag, so who's to say anyone's guilty? Third down play. Smith being pressured, and he throws it away. What are they saying? It's a fumble. New Mexico cooks it up, and... Into the end zone is Marcus Parker. He didn't get there. He's on the one yard line. There's still no signal here. There's mass confusion down there. And that's Everoy Thompson, not Parker. They might have to leave re that. They might. Never a whistle. And now they're saying Thompson for the touchdown. Everoy wow. Thompson takes it in. And that's what I was talking about, momentum change, Mike. The defense. And what has this Lobo team been about since Rocky Long has been here? Defense. From my angle, and we're way up high, six floors high, it looked like his arm was moving forward, but we're way up here. Let's take a look. Marcus Parker with the pressure. He, he's and, trying to move it forward, yeah. And he's throwing the ball forward. Did not look like a fumble. Everoy Thompson picked it up and went back and just got into the end zone. They never did really signal. And it looked like he pushed it out there, but yeah. it needs to be definitive. And so within the first minute of the second half, the Lobos take a fumble. Everoy Thompson picks it up. Takes it into the end zone, and now New Mexico gets the momentum back up by seven. And boy, the adjustment that the Lobos made at the halftime, as far as, I don't know if you've noticed how many people they were blaming back there in the backfield. Tony Temple at the goal line. 22 or thereabouts before he was brought down. Hard to tell whether he lost the ball beforehand or not. He was lifting it up and he lost it. He was Ready lifting it up. It he never came forward with it. Did you notice that? It came out of his hand before he came forward. So that was the, the ruling again by the officials. Look at that. Now he's starting to come forward. Ball's gone. Well, I don't know. It's still a tough call. I don't think he ever... Again, I think, they, they look for conclusive proof, and the official up there apparently did not feel he had it. And no. Maybe he didn't. There's Smith again. Oh, how did he get out of that? Second down play. No, first down play, rather. Picks up five. You, you know, he, he probably, right now, he, it looks like he's taking this whole thing upon himself because, man, he is really getting it done. And there's a Lobo shaking up. Brad Smith flushed out of the pocket, cut back, still on his feet. Missed tackles that time by New Mexico. Two or three of them before Mike Mahorek wrapped him up, as well as Billy Britton. Well, that's what speed will do for you. I mean, you think you have a guy, and you don't. Because, I mean, you're trying to, unless you wrap him up. See, look, at, look he's just shedding tacklers. He's just shed guys. And if you, unless you wrap him up, you don't have him. Yeah. Smith pressured, gets rid of it, down the middle, incomplete. Eck was his intended receiver. You see, that's the difference between, see, that the, that ball was underthrown, and that's, that's going to happen to you when you, I mean, he's only human. You take too many shots, you start feeling the pressure. Look at the pressure coming, and the, and the pressure has been coming harder 
this period than it has all game. I'm not sure if he, who the intended receiver was on that play. Second down now. Again, the pass inside. Almost have this one snipped out. Quincy Black is there that time. And wrap up Marcus Woods. And you know, that shuttle pass hasn't been really too effective for Missouri because one thing I noticed about the, the uh, front line of the Lobos and, and the, the guys coming up from the back, the linebacking core, everybody's been getting to their run gaps and, and sealing that off. That, that play hasn't been able to go anywhere. Third down and nine. Ball just inside the 50-yard line now into New Mexico territory. Just underway, second half. Smith forced out again. Gets rid of it. Caught first down. That time it's Arnold Britt with the catch. And he'll limp back to the huddle. That's just a good job of, by Brad Smith to not lose his focus. Run to the other side of the field, look downfield, got a man open. All he has to do at that point is make a nice little lob pass almost. I mean, it, he didn't put much on that pass. He just made sure it got there. That's the 38. The ball is ready. Man in motion. Snap again. Just has his time and a man, but over for him. And that was Rucker. Four catches in the first half, but not one that time. Rucker had beaten the Lobo defender on that play, and that, that if he catches that ball without having to stretch out, that's six. But he would have fallen because he had to stretch out so much. He had had his man beat by a couple of steps there, Mike. That seems to be a weakness, the weakness for Brad Smith. He's not completed one downfield on a touch pass like that yet tonight. Second down play. Now the option. Far side, Temple. Nice game, good effort there when it looked like he had nothing going. And One of the Lobos just took, took a massive block that, that spun that play open. Uh, one, one of the Lobos actually got to that play and could have made that play if that block wasn't there. That was an awesome block by somebody on Missouri to make that all happen, Mike. Tyler Donaldson came over, defensive end, to make the stop. Now it's third down three. And a first down, Missouri, and more. Smith still on his feet. It's a foot race to the corner, and he's going to get in. It's a combination of elusiveness and bad tackling by the New Mexico Lobo. Right, that, once again, that, that bad tackling, I mean, if somebody has too much speed, you, will, you never wrap them up completely unless you have to have the right angle on them when they have that kind of speed. I mean, that guy has breakaway speed. And he happens to be the quarterback. And that was a great run by Brad Smith. Give Brad Smith credit for looking where he had to go. I mean, he was looking upfield the whole time, choosing his lanes carefully, got to the end zone. Once he got to the corner, that was it. And now Adam Crossett will try to tie this game up again. Looking all at the half. Just got that one in the upright, and now we're tied at 21 all. So we're less than four minutes into the second half. Both teams have scored, and we're tied at 21 apiece. Crossett will kick it off. From Liberty, Kansas. And it's on its way. Smith will take it. No, he won't. Not sure whether he touched it or not, but it doesn't matter. It will be a touchback. Uh, 21 off. Missouri has tied this thing up again. Lobos get their first possession of the second half. The run by Travis Brown going nowhere thanks to Earl Stevens. Yeah, that defense is going to be fired up now. So this is an important series for New Mexico to not come out, you know, like like a dog when a dog is scared. It's tail tough. You know, they need to come out and... It, and keep doing what they've been doing all game. You know, if they come out and act intimidated, well, you know, the momentum will swing big like a pendulum. Okay, cross the middle. And incomplete looking for the tight end. John McClone there, he caught a touchdown pass to get things started for the next time. You know, give the offensive line a little credit tonight. Uh, Cole hasn't really taken that much heat. 
No, he hasn't. You're He's right. had time to throw the ball. And this is a big third down play. Third down, seven. You hear the crowd roar. McKamey, buying time, throws it downfield, and nearly picked off. And somebody downfield, Thomas Wilson, the wide receiver, the intended receiver, was not even looking for the football. It's like he was just standing there. That's unbelievable. Now watch, downfield, right there, blocking. Blocking downfield is Wilson, and the ball almost hits him. And it's battered away by... A.J. Kincaid, and there's McCamey very frustrated there, but probably lucky it was not picked off. Yeah. I think Wilson was just trying to hold his block, and, you know, as a receiver, you have to know what's going on behind you, though. There's the kick. Picked up on the run at the 7 by Earl Goldsmith, who also wears number 7. Nothing settled yet. We're 9.33 into the third quarter, 21 apiece. After the New Mexico punt, Missouri takes over. 21-21. Smith had room to run if he wanted to. Instead, he'll go to his receiver, Marcus Woods, out of the backfield. Yeah, he's finding this rhythm, Mike, and, and uh, that's going to makes for a lot of work for the local defense because Smith is not only finding his rhythm but his receivers are running also. And Smith is now the all-time passing leader at the University of Missouri moving past Jeff Handy on the all-time list to the top of the list. Holy home holds rushing and oh, ball is back there. That's Woods again. Holds rushing and TD passing uh, records. They'll set them all by the end of the season. I don't think uh, Jeff Handy will hold it against him, unless he's like those guys from the 72 Dolphins who get in the hotel room and, <laughs> <laughs> and cheer for everybody to lose. Yeah. That's, that's almost sick behavior, Mike. <laughs> Total yards for Smith tonight, over 200. Had over 400 last weekend against Arkansas State. Downfield has his man caught near the first down marker. Fifth catch by Chase Kaufman. for the first down there. Now suddenly it looks like momentum has shifted to Missouri. Often clicking. Smith is getting his yards on the ground and through the air. At the 40. Running back hand off. Woods has been carrying his share of the load here in this drive. So let's see what Rocky Long can do to slow down this momentum that Missouri has had really since the opening of this second half. Really late in the uh, first half. Of the right. Second down and 10. Marcus Woods now in the backfield. He's got the ball. Cut back. Four nine. Good tackling that time by Edroy Thompson who had the touchdown. Now, the drive starting to slow, starting to salt, stall, which is what the Lobos were able to do to the Tigers throughout most of the first half. Right, but they need to make sure they keep that going because uh, right now, like you said, they're on their heels. Third and 10 at the 16. Smith. Still on his feet, and he's going to score. How did he do that? I have no idea how he did that, Mike. He, he looked like he did on that one. I saw them, uh, everybody piled up around him, and I just saw him pull out. That is unbelievable. That guy has skills. How many missed this. tackles, though? Let's see. Right there, they're hanging on to him. That's what happens when you don't wrap up. You gotta wrap these guys play hard football week in and week out. You gotta wrap them up or they're not coming down. 
extra point attempt. And Missouri has the lead. First time, first time tonight, up 28 to 21. Super effort there by the quarterback, Brad Smith. From Youngstown, Ohio. The reigning player of the week in the Big 12 Conference. Brad Smith has now will have to be considered again. Still only a touchdown, though, separating these two. And if you're tuning in to watch the U.S. Open tennis, we'll have that for you. Take the lead tonight at 1035. with the kick into the end zone and the Lobos will not run that one out for a second straight time. And Hank Baskin, as Van mentioned, made the catch. We're going to take a look at it on the replay now with Cole McKamey back in. Great pitch and go right there to put the Lobos into Missouri territory. Ball at the 36. That last punt, by the way, from Missouri, 15 yards. Better than the eight-yard effort, like you said, man. It doubled it almost. <laughs> That's progress. Lobo's only down a touchdown, despite the bad things that have happened in the second half. And there's a tackle by the guard for New Mexico. Robert Turner got in the way of McKamey. Brian Smith was also there, but I think Turner was the one who knocked him down. And McKamey just took a dive there, had nowhere to go, play disrupted. And that was the smart thing for him to do, yep. is just to go down, because when you start trying to make something out of something, of nothing, that, that kind of nothing, they usually use the turnover. Loss of five. So is that Rodney Ferguson in right now? Adrian Bird. Now the halfback pass down the field. The basket is still on his feet. It's a foot race. And he's in. He's in. Touchdown, New Mexico. Unbelievable, Mike. I tell you what, you know what? Hank Basket is making himself an NFL highlight reel this season. Basket stretched. First, he went up high to get the pass from Dontrell Moore. And then he stretched into the end zone for six. Look at Dontrell fast. I mean, it was, it was a good pass from Dontrell. And Hank, always productive after the play. That's a big, big shift in momentum. This game is going to go down to the wire, Mike. This is a crazy game. Good football. That's what you want to see. It has been entertaining. Kenny Bird, he had the extra point. Low snap, but the kick is good, and we're tied at 28 all. Unbelievable, man. Something else. Hank Baskett from Roswell to Clovis. <laughs> I guess that's one way to look at it, huh? Dontrell is just talking up a storm, him and Hank. And Baskett now with uh, his second touchdown reception of the night. Three on the season. Had 132 yards receiving last week, or Monday, rather, against UNLV. Third, 64, New Mexico. Tony Temple. One minute, 11 seconds left, third quarter. Mike Powers, Van Tate and company here in Columbia, Missouri. Nobody's left. I guess that's not a surprise, is it? One of those games, man. Barn burn. Third kicks off. That's deep, and that will not be returned. Brad Smith, is, not only is he good with his legs, that guy... He gets rid of the ball fast. 6'2", 210 pounds. He has graduated already, has a degree. And he's got Look a degree that. in running the football here tonight. Had him try to go, and he could go. He could go. Past the 50, to the 40, and he's pushed out of bounds. Darrell Malone finally shoved him out. If he gets into the secondary, even Lobo fans have to say, he's, he's a nightmare, but he's fun to watch. Uh, he runs just like Dontrell Moore. Look at this, Mike. Look at the moves on Brad Smith. He gets through. Look at, look at it cut back up. Lobo defenders just falling off of him. And then 20 got hit hard. One of the Lobos got it. Took a pretty good shot on the block there. Smith has now broken the Missouri record for career rushing yardage. Temple there. Short gain, if, if at all. 
It reminds me a little bit of when you were playing up there in the vacant lot, <laughs> oh, up yeah. in the hob, just kind of going through all those little guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you remember I was like a, like smooth silk, man. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the third quarter, we were tied at halftime. We are tied to go into the fourth, 28 all. We'll be back with what could be the final 15 minutes after this. To start the fourth quarter, tied at 28 all. Each team has scored 14 points here in the second half. Track meet, Mike. Yes, and Missouri is leading the way. Threatening again. Cross the middle, nearly picked off. Brad Smith goes down hard. Good coverage down there, Jarrell Malone, but the main story, and West, we haven't mentioned uh, Ken West. He's done a nice job tonight. And now Marcus Parker comes back in for the first time since that first series of the second half. I think he got his ankles retaped, and I think he was cramping up. I mean, it just looked like he was, and I don't know that. They, obviously, he can, he can run still. He's in there. A down play, and, boy, I tell you what, when you get Marcus Parker in there, now, he didn't make the stop. It's a different level. He's a difference maker there. And you give Justin Clayton some of the responsibility or some of the credit for that last stop. Well, what Marcus Parker does is if, if there was any softening in the middle, that's gone. Yeah. That's totally gone because he's bringing serious heat up the middle. They're going to go for it. Well, they're in one of those positions where it's too far to go for a punt or for a field goal, rather, and really you're, you're too close in for a punt at about the 36-yard line. So they will go for it even though it's fourth and ten. Down the middle, man there, overthrew him again. For about the fourth time tonight, Smith has overthrown receivers down the middle. And you know he feels bad about that because, at the, you know, he overthrew him, but think about it. He's thinking, I don't want to throw this ball short where it could be picked off. He throws it long enough where he, his guy is already beating everybody, yep. so he throws it long enough where if the guy keeps sprinting, he could get there, but obviously it was... I mean, he's fast, but let's face it, it, it was too far. <laughs> yeah, I'll die. Unless he has Mike Powers blind that's to right. see. The yard too far, and that, again, has been the only chink in his armor tonight. But New Mexico takes over. A chance to regain the lead. Smith, Marcus, cuts up field and will gain seven. And you notice how Marcus Smith, instead of breaking it out to the outside that time, he decided to cut inside, which is on that, on that play, you do take – Take, have to take what the defense gives you. But if there were a couple other times where he was running so fast that if he had cut inside, he would have had great results. But he just chose to keep breaking it out to the outside. That's the first time I've seen him cut that play inside. Nice decision making there. Yeah, the outside was really taken away from him. They had to kind of steal that pretty good. Second down and three. McCamey pointing out something about the defense to basket. Now. Basket pulls up, going downfield, open, caught, down at the five-yard line. Hank Basket and Cole McCamey again. They were talking to each other before the snap of the ball. That's called Hank, Mike. That's all that is. I mean, Hank running what looks like a nine route. Cole stepping back and just hitting them. That's, that's called Hank. Let's take a look at the replay, Mike. There it is, right there. You see McCamey looking over there, points him out. Beautiful job by our production team. And you know, when you got when you know each other, and you have communication like that. I mean, he could have been saying something like cornbread, and Hank knows what that means. <laughs> right there, right there. They mark it at the seven. And up, up the middle. This is a short game. Xavier Jackson with the stop. Dontrell Moore getting some help up from Kilby. I like Dontrell's little Jim Moore, Jim Brown uh, routine. <laughs> Lay there for a while. Look at that. Approaching 200 yards receiving now for Hank Baskin. HP3 on the sidelines at the moment. A little bit surprised. Second down play. McCamey will keep it. Looking across the middle. Watch. 
intended receiver that time. Logan Hall. Looked like Logan Hall, and looked like it was right in his hands from the angle that, up here. That's surprising that Logan Hall dropped that because Logan Hall had great hands all last year. Look at this, Mike. Logan Hall running a drag route. And yep, they hit him right in the hands. Had to stretch out, but it looked like a catchable ball. Now the third down and goal play at the three. Hank Basket back in, wide left. He's working against A.J. Kincaid one-on-one. -on -one. Will they loop it toward it? Option right side. McCamey, touchdown. Wow. Now that Cole McCamey just showed how fast he was. He had to run all the way out to the track because he had that much speed going. When he, as soon as he hit that corner, that was it, Mike. There was no, no way they could catch him when he got to the corner. Terrific call by the Lobo coaching staff. I think everyone was thinking basket to the right. left. The decoy. Option to the right. And great blocking there. Bird. And one of the defenders ran right by yep. Cole. He went for the pitch, man. That's what happened. That's exactly what he did, and that was Jason Simpson. I think when you're that close, you take your chances on the pitch and go for who's ever got the ball. But Kenny Bird lines it up again. Young man from St. Pius High School. Never played football until he was talked into coming out for the team a couple of years ago. Was a soccer player at Pius. Kicks it through. In New Mexico, back up by seven. What a Saturday night this is. 35-28 our score. Well, Cole McCamey sat down for one series early in the third quarter, and he's come back with a vengeance to help New Mexico regain the lead. Five touchdowns so far in the second half, man, combined Crazy. for both teams. Crazy game. It's, it's like the old, when the, before the Mountain West, the old Western Athletic Conference. Temple, sideline, and Missouri will start with great field position. Lobos are 1-0, looking to go 2-0. Matching the best start under Rocky Long. Inside screen. That's X. Down the middle. To the 50. Good call by Missouri. The little screen there because when you have that many defenders rushing to the backfield to get to the quarterback, there will always be a receiver open. First down at the 27. Smith tucks it in. Nice tackle. Good job that time for Cody Case. Hanging on for dear life. Making a play. That's the first time somebody actually got a clean tackle on him that I can remember in quite some time unless they've had the pressure in the backfield. Look at this, Mike. This is just, this is just Cody Case shedding off his block and watching what's going on. You know, normally, what's been the case is that Smith has been like running past those guys when they've noticed that he's coming their way. There like there. Again, the left side, they had the trip set to the right. And he ran it to the left, Quincy Black among the Lobo tacklers over there. And if if you're Smith, you got to be a little bit tired. Yeah. That's true. Uh, well, you know, he'll start getting tired. I don't know, Mike, the adrenaline in this type of game like this, you might not feel tired until tonight. You just you fall out in the room or something, you know, and just fall asleep wherever <laughs> you're standing. <laughs> Probably. And we still have. More than eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Brad Smith, the quarterback. Keep it left side, has some room. First down. Out of bounds, it's just shy of the 10-yard line, and Missouri will keep things going there. We kind of knew that they were going to do that, huh? Maybe that timeout was to give him a blow, let him get a break. Maybe. And then so he could get, uh, get ready to be fresh, come back and run the ball. Boy, first down. he looked beat up now, tired. Good Good hole right there. Quincy Black kicked out. Finally, Michael Tui pushed him out of bounds. He probably is very tired, Mike. Now, well, it's been quite an individual performance. The right. But the Lobos have the lead, and the Lobos have had great efforts, too. Hank Basket, in particular. Now the pass across the middle. Good coverage. Excellent job by New Mexico's DeAndre Wright. I bet he wishes he had have a do-over on that because that ball was right in his hands. And as a defender, when you have something like that happen in a game like this, this late in the game, you, that can make you feel awful. Look at that. 
Should have right in the hands, Mike. Right there on the side of his way. He had that ball. Third down and goal at the 14 for Missouri. You would think it's too far out for Smith to run it in. No, it's not. I mean, this guy, could, they could be up to the 50-yard line. I'm going to be Chase Kaufman across the middle. And finally, Smith was able to find somebody open. Do you go for two or do you tie it up? I think you tie it up. Chase Kaufman is good. He's got my vote as one of those great tight ends. I mean, Kellen Winslow went to this school, so he's got some tradition there, man. <laughs> Something to live up to. Yep. Second touchdown reception in two games for Kaufman. He, he's a great tight end. The freshman. And now for the tie, Adam Crossett. Liberty, Missouri. To try to tie this up. Crowd gets quiet. The kick is true. And with 7.58 to go in regulation, New Mexico 35, Missouri 35. What a crazy game this is, man. Well, there's been some wild games here tonight across the country, and few have been as wild and as exciting as this one. New Mexico 35 and Missouri 35. With less than eight minutes to go. We're glad you're with us tonight across New Mexico. As the Lobos try to do something they haven't done since, what, 1983. Win against a BCS school on the road. And the Lobos will not run it out. Marcus Smith encouraged by his teammate to stay in. 35 all. A field goal might win this one. Marcus Smith cuts back. Has some room. First down, gain of 11. You notice something, Mike, about that fly series play? The two times that he's cut inside, that's been the most productive. Yeah. Because those guys are trying to follow him on the pursuit, and they're going outside trying to stay with him. But watch this. If he looks in there and see, look, you got a hold, you cut it back up, instead of trying to keep to the outside, you'll always get something out of that play. That's the 43. First down from there. Anthony Carter is wide left. Option right now. McCamey keeps it. Room. Inside the 50 down to near the 40-yard line. Dragged down by Overstreet. And so the big plays on this drive coming from the junior quarterback. I guess Cole is saying, uh, hey, you know, Brad's not the only one in the house who can run. Because he's right now he's giving them a run for their money. No, no pun intended on the words there. Fatigue, I think, definitely a factor for these defenses. Oh, yeah. The defenses have had to work. This has been an exciting game. If you like offensive football, this has been a great game. Because these offenses, they, they've been on the field, and they've just been entertaining all day. Approaching six minutes to go. Straight back, McCamey. Open. Basket. Still on his feet. Do we have a whistle? Yes. At the 20-yard line, Hank Basket with the catch. He beat his man but slipped, and the Lobos are in great shape. Wow. I thought there was a whistle on the play when you said that, Mike. I was looking for that, but wow. I, the, the Lobos have just shown that they can come back. Now look at this. Look at the protection. This offensive line, you know, the Missouri coach said that he was concerned with the size, and he probably had a legitimate beef there because those guys are just even if they're just standing there they're in the way yes they are McCamey two outstanding games back to back now three if you count the Emerald Bowl against Navy McCamey now the pitch to Moore did a great job just to hang on to that because Diedrich Harrington was barreling down in and you said the word Navy and that was that play in the Navy game that Dottrell got hurt on. It looked just for a second like Moore was going to bobble that, and he hung on to it. Lost, though, of five yards. 
Kenny Bird is the place kicker for New Mexico. One for one this season. Kicked the 37-yarder last week. Looked very strong in doing it. I think we got a timeout here. Timeout so the announcers can take a break. <laughs> 5-11 to go, 35-35, the Lobos with the ball when we come back. There's a look at Hank Basket, a career night for Hank. He has nine catches, 200 yards, and two touchdowns. And with New Mexico now, ball spotted at the 24. Second down and 15 from there. They will likely need Hank Basket to get out of this. Not necessarily trouble, but to keep the ball moving. More of the setback. Travis Brown also in. Time, time, set up the screen. Not quite. Intended receiver was Dontrell Moore. Jason Simpson helped to break it up. And Dontrell had nothing but green grass in front of him if he had caught that ball, Mike. Throwing it just a little bit behind him. It looked like, watch this. There's the pass there. Pretty good coverage there. Yeah, a guy right there on him. But I don't know if that guy was, would have been able to get Dontrell. Dontrell looked like he was in a running running mode there. Well, if I'm New Mexico, I'm looking for number 18 here. Third down and 15. You no, know, Missouri's always in that zone blitz, but they disguise those coverages very well. Marcus Smith, they'll try to run for it. Interesting call on third down and long. And now they're going to ask Kenny Bird to kick a long field goal here. About 41 yards, finally when they spot it, somewhere in that vicinity. That was an interesting call, Mike. Rocky doesn't look too happy about all that at all. Well, they had an opportunity with first down at the 19-yard line to perhaps put this game away or at least try to right and now Kenny Bird who won the, the starting job here about a week before the season started <laughs> on its way right down the middle wow Kenny Bird with his career-long 41 yards to put New Mexico up 38-35 with 4.22 to go. I just saw Kenny Bird take the biggest gas at the end of that that I've ever seen over a field goal kicker. Now, look at that. Boy, I right tell you down what, the middle. That's pretty true. Look, look, maybe we'll see him take it. And this will be a key kickoff here. You don't want to kick it out of bounds. You know, the ideal situation, of course, is to have no run back at all. And there's your attendance tonight, 50,701. The kick, and this one may go out of bounds. Oh, wow. That is just a big mistake. Kicked one out of bounds last week against UNLV. That's a bad break right there. No snap, Smith gets it back. Room up the middle, and he decided to cut back when I thought he had room straight up the middle. A four-yard gain for Smith. That guy is so dangerous. I'm sure he looked at the clock and said, like, oh, we got plenty of time. It will start to be a factor here, though. Under four. Blitz is coming. Good call on the little screen pass. Here comes Woods. Didn't pick up much, though. Two plays and only six yards picked up, and they'll waste about a minute, minute 20 or so. Yeah, that's the one thing about it. You need to start finding those sidelines when you got the clock running. They don't seem too concerned about it. Maybe they just want to run it down the, and have a shot at the end zone at the end. They're down play. Off the middle, it's picked off. New Mexico picks it off. And the Lobos, Gabriel Fulbright, does it again. He has a mouthful of gold, and he's making golden plays. That's the second pick today. Look, Gabe, and you know his mouth is just going. Gabe is running his mouth right now. If you had a mic down there, you know, look at that. Gabriel Fulbright is money. 
Yeah, he is. And we talked about that at the beginning of the game. I mean, he's, when they need him, something to happen, it's Gabe Fulbright. What happened at the last game? UNLV had a shot to win it. Gabe Fulbright, interception. Look at this game. Closing minutes, Gabe Fulbright. This is not over, obviously, 3.15 to go. Yeah, that's, that's plenty of time now. I don't want to sound like, I don't want to sound like the game's over, because it's not. Couple of timeouts left for the Missouri Tigers. Hand off, running room. Dontrell Moore. Find the map, he brought him down. <laughs> I can't read left, but I'm sure it wasn't that a great play, and it was. You, you know what, Mike? We need to have an open mic night with Gabe Fulbright. Look at all that gold in his mouth. And, then, and in case you're wondering at home, that's a pop-out set of gold teeth. That's, those aren't his real teeth, so he can pop those out, and his parents are real happy about that. <laughs> Almost taking their time. Under three minutes to go. McCamey, they're going to try to pass for it, and strange call, I think, there. Clock stops now. McCamey was forced out of the pocket. And that will bring up second down and 10. Let's take a look at uh, Gabriel Fulbright in action from one week ago. UNLV is driving late in the game, a chance to win it. And there he comes from out of nowhere with the big interception to help seal the game for New Mexico. Same thing. Screaming and running. Gabe at the end of that play. And let's see if the Lobos just hand the ball off to Dontrell Moore here. What they do. Down to the 10. I would be surprised if Missouri took a timeout right here. The clock moves. By the time the ball is snapped, it could be at about the two-minute mark. And it will be, Mike. Russians and I, both teams, moving up and down the field on the ground. Almost identical. Look at that. But the Lobos lead it by three. Third down now. Into the end zone for basket. He it's caught it. it. Touchdown, Hank Basket. Wow. Basket out jumped the defender to put this game away. Marcus King just put it out jump. I tell you what, Hank Basket is making a highlight reel tonight. Hank Basket is moving himself up that chart. I, like I told you when we were talking, when me and you were talking earlier, Mike, and you, I know you already knew this, but Gil Brandt had him on that list, NFL list. And look at the replay. This is Hank. Yeah, remember this guy's a high jumper. He was set jumping what seven feet? That's a tremendous play. Just a tremendous athletic play right there by Hank Baskin. Bird is on to add the extra point. And he does. And New Mexico with two minutes, one second left, lead by ten. And Bird, I can almost guarantee you, will not kick this one out of bounds. Okay, is okay. that a guarantee? I'll guarantee uh, it. All right, I okay. will guarantee it. Yeah, he comes through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did it again. No, he didn't. Oh, he did. <laughs> Mike? I, like Who, I must owe you something on that one. <laughs> but he made the big field goal to give, to give the Lobos the lead. Maybe for good. Although you never know with Brad Smith. No, that guy, that minute 55, hey, he's got plenty of time, man. There's plenty of time on the clock for him to work. Here's the Franklin. Clock stops. Still only a minute 55 to go. Defense, he's, they need to play here, and I think it's a, a, a win. They can score in a hurry. That's right. Four receivers now. Pressure up the middle. Just out of the pocket, and he will run out of bounds. Stop, stop. 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 Smart play from Brad. Yeah. New Mexico, as we mentioned, back home next week. There's Everoy Thompson, who has a touchdown to his credit, a controversial touchdown. All right? Yeah, he's a really emotional guy, so I wish I could have heard what Elroy had to say after the touchdown. 
down play. Forced out. Gives it up to Wood. Clock will continue to move. 134 in count. Lobos, I was finished my thought, are home to New Mexico State next week. Third down play. Of course, it's not really the, the downs that matter. Blitz inside the screen. Room inside the 30-yard line. That's with the catch and the run there. Block stops momentarily again to move the chain. Last week, UNL on Monday again, UNLV scored late and covered an onside kick as that ball was thrown away. That game was crazy. Man, no crazier than this one, sir. I know. This, uh, this, uh, this has been an entertaining game, very entertaining. Both teams just serious offense. See a lot of tired bodies. We head back to the airplane tonight and get on and head back to Albuquerque. And if you're tired, you might as well be happy. And that's what we're right. hoping to do. Finish this one off. Okay, we're to finish this one. Okay. Moved out of trouble. And that will be on, incomplete, I believe, and it is. With 59 yeah. seconds to go. I don't know how he saw the defender coming from the back side. He made a quick little cut right before he was about to get hit. You didn't see those eyes in his helmet? I guess not. <laughs> i tell you what, man, this guy is so Houdini. He's, he's a great player. He's way better than what I, I thought he was good, yeah. but he's way better than what I thought he was. I mean, he's, he's a great quarterback. Yep. Down the middle. And a good hit to knock the ball loose. Great job by the Lobo defenders back there. Is that O.J. Swift doing the damage? It looked like O.J. Swift. And now it'll be fourth down. Now this is the ball game right here. This is the ball game. Whether they can keep it going or not. If they can keep it going, then it's just going to hurt. Up to 28. Smith stays there, rolls it. No, he hangs on to it. Sack. Wow. Everoy Thompson is there. Clayton is there. And that's the ball game. Mike, you know what? You, you made an observation about him getting tired. And I think we saw that this last couple series. Yeah. He wasn't as effective. He's a, you know, I'm not taking anything away from his performance. He's awesome. But uh, he did look like he got a little fatigued there at the end. And the guy put the whole team on his back, literally. Look at that. Nowhere to throw, nowhere to throw. Yep. Still trying to make something happen, and you run out of real estate. Yep. Play is over. 46 seconds <laughs> left. Evroy Thompson. Well, I tell you, that's a guy who looked like he wasn't going to develop into a big-time player. Struggled after he transferred to New Mexico. Was on a two-year Mormon mission. But he just came back and fought his way into the lineup. And did a great job as Paul McCamey scrambles and goes down. And Missouri could use a timeout if they so choose, but apparently not. 30 seconds to go, and the Lobos will not have to snap it again. And the victory is about to go in the books, 45-35. And there are a smattering of Lobo fans up in this corner over here. Rocky Long gets the victory, so it will be a happy flight back home to Albuquerque tonight for Rocky Long and his staff and the players. Once again, our final score here in, in Missouri at the University of Missouri, it's New Mexico 45, Missouri 35. We'll be back with some highlights and a final thought or two right after this.